Hi ladies! So I'm here to do the club cards for June. I just did a, a die cut and I'm checking to make sure there's no pieces left in it. So the first card is this one. I'm calling it embossing, embossing matte background because we're going to use the cutting die from Eclectic Layers. This is the die and it's normally a cutting die but by using the new embossing mats you can turn it into an embosser, embossing folder type thing. So this is what it does. So to use the embossing mats... Oh, okay. So they tell you to use them with the embossing, the die face down, but I've discovered that, or face up, but I've discovered that that's a little awkward because sometimes you can't tell where your die is going to be. So we just, I've just been reversing the sandwich. So the sandwich is your Big Shot platform, and if you have the one with the tabs, you want both of the tabs open. And then uh, mine, I need a shim or two. Then this is part of the embossing mat. I'll just get the other piece. There's three pieces to the embossing mat. So you get the, the white plate, and it's a hard plate. And then you get this thick um, gray mat, and that's for doing some things. And then there's this thin embossing mat, and that's the one we're going to use. So the gray one they say to use when you um, have cut out a die cut and you want to do some embossing. So, for instance, if we cut this one out, I can put it back in with the gray embossing mat and it will emboss all those little stitch holes in there. So if I remember at the end of this video, I'll show you how that works. I haven't done it yet, so it'll be an experiment for both of us. Now I'm just going to check and make sure that my video is live. I can't see it here, so hang on. I just want to make sure that it's oriented the right way. There we are. Okay, good. So it's oriented right, because I don't want it to be this way when it should be this way, because it's hard to watch. Okay, so back to the embossing. So you have your your um, pl platform, a shim or two if you need them the white plate, the thin embossing mat, then you put your cardstock down, and then you put your, your die on top of your cardstock. And by doing it this way, you can tell exactly where you're getting it. Where if you do it the way it says in the instructions, you have your cutting, the regular clear cutting plate, and then you put your cardstock and your paper, and then you put this on top of it. And when you put it down, I discovered that it was moving a lot. And then this goes on top, but that doesn't work very well because then you can't see where your embossing is being done. So the way I use it is this way with your, your cutting blades for your die are down against the um, floppy mat. And then you put your clear cutting plate on top of it. It's got a warp in it. We'll put it this way. And then you run it through your Big Shot. And this is the result. You get this lovely embossed look on your card front. And then we're going to wrap some ribbon around it. I have a die cut with a happy birthday. It, I put bling on the words with the Wink of Stella see if it will show up there and some rhinestones in the flowers the inside is the same uh, flower pot with the flowers then I used the poppy parade marker so let's carry on with life okay so here's the card that we're doing I've already done the embossing I'm just gonna put the ribbon on
and this ribbon is Whisper White Sheer Ribbon. It's five and a half inches and then I tied a bow, a number two bow, which is just my way of telling me where on my bow tire I am going to tie the bow. So it just goes on here like this. And I'm putting it there. Now I'm just going to put this on to make sure. No, I don't like that. So I'm going to move it down a bit. So to put the ribbon on, I've just put a couple of strips of tape um, this way on the back. And then I can move this to wherever I want. And I know that the tape is going to be there to hold it in. Okay, that's not straight. Move it up a bit. Let's have a look. That'll do. Okay, I'm gonna stick some double-sided tape over top of it. And when I do my videos to post online, I always use snail, but you guys know how I feel about this double-sided tape. So I should probably be using snail, but I didn't get it out this time. Okay, so I have a thick Whisper White card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle. I'm just going to put this on. Oh, this is really unusual for me because I usually have at least one layer underneath here, but this time that's not happening. Okay, then I have a bow and I have a glue dot. Did you know, on your glue dots, if you wrap a piece of ribbon around it, it will help the glue dots to stop from running loose on you when you're trying to use them. I'll show you what I mean in just half a second here. I'm just going to get it off my finger and attach the bow and get my ribbon scissors. Give it a little trim. So this is what I mean. So I just took a scrap of ribbon and wrapped it around and tied it in a knot. And then as you pull this way to get your glue dots out, it just runs along. And then when you're ready to close it up, you just run it back and it holds it closed. And then you don't have glue dots running all over the place was an aha moment for one of my on stage that I went to. Okay, we're going to use Poppy Parade. This color is Poppy Parade. It's uh, returning in color from a couple of years ago. And Happy Birthday. So the Happy Birthday comes from Blow Out the Candles. There's the happy birthday. This also has the candles and confetti dies. So just let me find those so I can show you what they look like. So here's the candles and confetti dies. There's uh, some candles and a couple of balloons and this is a this is a cake and that's the cake plate there and this is a tag topper. This is really cool. Um, it cuts little confetti like holes in cardstock. Let me see. I think I've got. Oh, I'm sorry. But I've got the, I've got the silhouette already done here. So, this, this is what it looks like. So here's that piece where the cuts the confetti holes in. Now, wouldn't that be cool to cut a bunch of those in? different colors and put them inside a shaker card. Oof. Uh, can't wait. Okay. Focus. Focus. Back. So when I stamp this, I'm going to want it down and over to the right so that there's still room to put the, the um, flower in there. So let's make certain that I get it in there relatively where it's supposed to be. Hopefully it's straight. 
did a video last night and holy man, I could not get my stamping done no how. There we are. Now while I have the poppy parade out, I'm just going to stamp myself a, a vase. Oh, might as well do the inside. And the envelope while I'm at it. Okay, and close up Poppy Parade. Get it out of my way. Okay, so now we're going to use a memento and the flower spray. And I need I need a little mask because I don't want the I don't want the um, flower to be all the way up. But I don't want it to sh go below the, the rim of the vase either. So I'm just going to use this as a, a mask to stamp that. And we can use a post-it note too if you want. I just didn't have one here. So I grabbed this out of the garbage. That works. Well, except that it moves. There we are. Now back to this. We don't have to worry about the mask for this because the vase is cut out. And we'll just stick that right there. Okay. This is the Vase Builder Punch, and it goes with the, coordinates with the Varied Vases stamp set, which is where I got the, the pot and the flower spray. And there's best wishes and hoping your day blooms with happiness. It's a really cool set. And it has this coordinating punch, and you can buy them in a bundle. So, I'm going to punch out this vase up here at the top. And pardon me while I just angle it my way so I can see it. Where'd it go? There it is. Now I haven't popped that up. It's just flat on there. And you can basically put it wherever you want it. Well, maybe down a little bit. There we are. Okay, so now I'm going to use Pineapple Punch, which is one of the new in colors. And just color the flowers. And I'm not worried about the centers because I'm going to pop some rhinestones in the center. So they'll be covered anyways. There we are. That's one. And this is the inside piece. And the envelope. I love this color yellow. It's so bright, so fun. It's even brighter than Daffodil Delight. Can you imagine? Now I'm going to use the Poppy Parade marker and just go around the outside. You guys could use a, a sponge if you want. Oh, I had awesome news today. The Stampin' Blends are now available. All of them. 
So 11 new colors were released today. So that means Poppy Parade and, no not Poppy Parade, I think it's Lovely Lips Lipstick. I don't think Poppy Parade is one of the new colors. Anyways, they're available to order. Okay, let's put this on the inside. See that cute little tulip? Look at this. Isn't that adorable? That I could have put tulips on there and punched them out in different colors. Huh, cute, cute. Okay. I lost my card there for a sec. It was hiding on me. All right, there's the envelope in there. Some dimensionals. And stick them on here. Aren't these mini dimensionals cool? I love them. Now before I take the, the backing off, I just want to make sure if I've left any holes and I think I'm going to add a piece right in the middle there and right in the middle there. That's better. I just don't like my stuff to cave in in the middle. I'll use this and put the pieces on there. And get off my finger. Thank you. Now I'm just going to make one last pass through and make sure I haven't re forgotten to remove any of those pieces. And we'll just pop that on there like that. There we are. Card's done. Just get the Winkastella and give it a good shake when you pick it up because sometimes it settles and then you're going to end up with this really weird silver stuff that comes out and it's not clear. So it's just really easy to go over top of the letters with the Winkastella and add bling because you know it's all about the bling. Could have done this before I put the flower pot on there, but that's okay because you don't see that part anyways. See how quick and easy this is? And look at the difference. There we are. See the difference in the ooh, blingy blingy and a couple of rhinestones. I've been using a lot of bling lately. That's cool. Have to, have to get some more rhinestones before class because that's not enough for everybody to have rhinestones. So there we are. Here's the card. The card and the envelope. I think I'm going to put some. What color should I put in there? don't want to really do red. Hmm. Let's see, maybe Daffodil Delight. Oh no! Mango! Mango Melody. I just want something to brighten up the centers a bit without standing out. And there it is. Mango Melody it is! Uh oh look what I did. <laughs> Stamped the envelope upside down. Way to go, Mollet. So I apologize to those of you that in the get theirs in the mail. I didn't put different colors in the centers. I don't even remember whether I colored them because I figured you guys probably had markers of some sort or other at home that you could color with. Here we are. 
put my upside down envelope in one, put my right side up envelope in the other one, and there we go. Two cards ready to go. And there's um, folds in this one and not in this one. So what I ran this through twice and I think that's why I got those folds there. So I would suggest when you get your embossing mats, don't run them through twice. Just run it through once. It makes a good job, but I just was lazy and decided to bring it back too. Anyways, thanks ladies, and I'll get the other two videos going and we'll see you all on Wednesday. Bye.